iNotion is. As you probably know, there's no way to create charts with Notion's built-in features at the moment. You can create summary reports, but your options for visualizing data are quite limited. Luckily, there's lots of talented developers who have created chart tools which can be embedded in Notion and some that can be used to visualize the contents of your Notion databases. I've been using Rose for a while now, so their team asked me if I'd like to record this video to share this resource that they've created and I've helped them to put together. So today I'm going to walk you through the different use cases which are all possible when using embedded charts in Notion. I'll point out some of the pros and cons of each tool and hopefully you'll be able to discover some new ways to create reports in Notion as well. The main site that I'm going to focus on is this site here, which is notioncharts.com. It shows you a few different use cases for using charts in Notion, all displaying rows charts so that you can get a sense of what's possible when you're using their tools. And then this site links to a Notion template, which has uh, some examples of other services that you could potentially use to create your charts as well along with some live examples of Rose spreadsheets and the databases that they're linked to. To download that Notion template, all you need to do is click the Get It button that's right here on the page. And I'll show you some more of the content from that template in just a moment. So first of all, if we take a look at Rose, uh, it's not a dedicated chart making tool or integration, but it's a very powerful spreadsheet app, especially if you need to work with APIs like Notions. They let you fetch data from Notions API, format it, and then display it in a chart. So if we switch to the Notion template and have a look at this resource, if you wanted to create an expense tracker, for example, if you can click into here and there's two ways that you can set up this template. One is to link rows to a Notion database uh, and the other is just to store your data in rows as well. And then you can display that rows chart uh, in either case in your Notion page. That'll look a little bit like this. So you've got a nice breakdown of your spender over time here, uh, spending per category as well when you're tracking your expenses. And this data can all be stored just like this in a Notion database. The data can be refreshed on a set frequency or you can just click this button in order to refresh it whenever you want to make sure that you're seeing the very latest data. And setting this up is pretty simple. As the guide says here, all you need to do is duplicate a Notion template, duplicate the rows template, and then follow the instructions to basically create an internal integration token, enter the ID of the database that you're linking rows to, and then fetch the data from that database and obviously display it in your chart. The other option is just to create the chart using data in your rows template. And if you duplicate the rows template, you will see what that looks like when you open up the spreadsheet just here. These are the charts that you're embedding, obviously. Uh, and then this is the data that the charts are pulling from. The main downsides of Rose service is needing to know how to fetch and manipulate data from a Notion database, if that's the approach that you're going to take. Obviously working with the Notion API, which is what you'd be doing there, takes some learning. And I'll probably create some content to share how you can do that in the future. It's not that difficult once you get to know the process. And luckily their spreadsheets can be stored as templates, so creators can simplify the process of getting set up with rows for you. They do have a pay tier, but in my experience, you're unlikely to run into their limits. So their service is effectively free which makes it a great option when you are creating simple charts for Notion. Next, if we go back, we have Notion Charts, so notioncharts.io. We can go to their website and obviously this gives you a good overview of exactly what their charts are capable of. They have some powerful chart making functionality with most of the options that you'd expect to see in a tool like Google Sheets. Like rows, you can sort, filter and group your data in an easy to use user interface. So obviously, again, with rows, you would be uh, sort of manipulating the data and constructing the chart uh, in a spreadsheet. Whereas here you are just looking at this sort of screen uh, when you're actually configuring the chart. Their service is paid, but you can try making up to five charts using some of their features, although not all of them for free. Moving on, there's also no chart, which looks a little bit like this. Again, it gives you a nice user interface to work with when you're setting up your chart. 
Their service is in beta though, and it's a little bit more basic than Notion charts or rows. They have a suggestion tool, which comes up with different visualizations for your data, which is quite neat. But I personally don't like the look of their charts too much, and they charge $9.99 a month at the moment. So they might be worth checking out, but potentially not the best tool for you at this point. Next, we can take a look at Notion VIP. This was one of the first chart creation tools for Notion, but somewhat strangely, you need to have your data in a Google Sheet in order to use their service, rather than pulling it from your Notion database. Their charts are fairly basic as well in terms of their functionality, but they do look quite good in my opinion. So if you don't have your data in Notion yet and you're not quite ready to make the switch and you've been using Google Sheets up until now, this could be a good option for you. Obviously, once you've created your charts, you can embed them in Notion pages, as you can see from this GIF. Lastly, we have Data Jumbo. Their service does use your Notion data. They offer a good range of different types of charts and they have some more advanced features like sourcing, grouping and filtering. I'm not a huge fan of the design of their charts either, but they do have a free plan with branding on their charts and a pay plan for $8.99 a month. So it might be worth trying them out as well. For me, looking at these different options, it would be a choice between using rows so that I can use a free service, which gives me access to lots of powerful functionality when it comes to actually manipulating the data that I fetched from my Notion database, as well as just presenting it nicely in a chart or Notion charts, which is a fairly cheap service and gives you lots of good options when it comes to customizing your charts. To give you some inspiration on different use cases for charts in Notion, We've got this gallery view inside the Notion template. And so we've got the expense tracker that we had a look at a little bit earlier on in the video. There's also an OKR progress tracker with set up instructions there at the top, which you can use to track completion of OKRs broken down by department. And again, this is pulling data from your Notion database. So you can duplicate this template and start using this straight away if you want to. There's also the option to visualize progress from a habit tracker, which is something that I've used rows for as well with my upward spiral notion template. Next up, we have a stock and crypto price tracker, which I know is a very popular use case for rows spreadsheets, again, because they can pull data from APIs. So this gives you a nice way to visualize this sort of data in your notion pages alongside the notion databases that you might be using to track your portfolio, for example. Then we have a social media tracker, which actually fetches data from the Twitter API and allows you to keep an eye on how many followers someone's account is getting and also the engagement with their tweets. Next up, we have time tracking for freelancers. So if you're tracking your time in a Notion database and you want to get a nice sense of how you're spending that time once you have, then you can fetch your data if it's in a format like this and display it in a simple pie chart like that. We also have time tracking for teams here which allows you to keep track of the number of hours that your team members have worked if you like to measure input rather than output. Then we have marketing reports, which give you a good summary of the performance of your emails and your ad campaigns, potentially, if you wanted to see how they're performing. This is a good example of a simple piece of Rose functionality, which allows you to see spark lines for different metrics and visualize those in very simple charts. And then lastly, we have a sales CRM here, which lets you see the deal signed per agent and also the value of deals in your pipeline broken down by products. So you can see which products are the ones that you're most likely to be selling in the future. So lots of different options there, and I'm sure you'll be looking for your own as well. Hopefully that gives you a good sense of the different tools that are available for this sort of thing and their strengths and weaknesses, along with some different types of charts that you might want to create when you're managing your work or your personal life in Notion. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to add a comment. If you'd like to try Rose out, then you can create an account using the affiliate link in the video's description and check back to the channel in the future for more videos like this, which will be focusing on automation and all of the cool integrations that you can add to your Notion workspace to make it even more powerful.